The talk of the town. Hot topics. Local talk. Part of your balanced breakfast. Mornings on 100.7 FM. WUTQ. 713 with Dave, Jay, and Sam on the talk of the town. Highs about 83 today, according to our staff meteorologist, Jill Reel from KTV. She'll join us live here in just a little while. And joining us live now in studio, it's John Callahan, the deputy director of the Canal Corporation, where we sit right now here at Roser Communications. John, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes. How are you doing today? Doing great. 83 sounds like a great day for canal inspection. Yeah, it is a good day for that. It's a good day to uh, to use the canal. We uh, we kayak on it often, actually, my wife and I. We love it. We uh, do the kayak drop up in uh, Rome at that park there. So We'll slow down for you when we go by later. <laughs> John, I'm going to put you on, on, on this uh, hot seat here for a minute. Is there ever a good day for canal inspections <laughs> there's never a bad day <laughs> okay. uh, it's always a good day on the canal and and it's certainly this time of year it's spectacular out there so we're very excited to be here sure now uh, what uh what's all what's involved in the canal inspection for you what, well, you what we do and it, it really is the legacy of dewitt clinton's first journey through the canal 190 years ago uh this october uh, but what we're doing is a full comprehensive operational inspection from one end of the canal to the other so we're inspecting our 57 locks our 16 movable bridges, but also the canal channel in between. We have 524 navigable channel miles across the state. So we're looking to make sure that the buoys are in the correct place, our other fixed aids to navigation, uh, debris along the shoreline. So it really is a comprehensive inspection, the entire waterway, which we conduct annually as required by law. Uh, but also with the locks and lift bridges, a scored analysis of the electrical, mechanical safety components at that site, which is a competitive process, and we do award a prize lock uh, each year after the inspection is concluded. Cool. Now, do you have special skills that you need to bring to bear to this? I see that your shirt says you are, quote, the canal ambassador. Canal ambassador. Uh, but uh, do you have other special skills in order to do these inspections? Well, the special skills really relate to our people. I mm -hmm. mean, if you look up how to build a canal employee, uh, it would say take one part museum curator, one part a magician, uh, one part PR person and one part technician because they are really extraordinary people and it's what makes this canal operate after nearly two centuries. So as far as our team, we, we do have a safety expert that is looking at the safety components of each location because we tell our folks the most important thing we want you to do in any work day is go home safely at the end of it to your loved ones. So right. that's first and foremost. We want to make sure these, these sites are safe not only for our employees but for the public. Yes, uh, my wife and I, I mentioned we uh, kayak uh, on the canal. We had a little bit of a, a, a revelation recently. We were reading about the canal. I did not realize the depth of the canal. It's not as deep as I would have thought. Uh, we are uh, where it is not as deep as we would like. We are working on. Oh, I didn't uh, realize that was even an issue. Yeah. Uh, we, we, uh, you'll, you routinely, if you kayak along mm -hmm. the canal, you'll see our blue and, and yellow, uh, maintenance vessels out there mm -hmm. routinely dredging. Uh, the channel, the project channel depth for this portion of the canal, in fact, the canal that runs from Waterford to Oswego, which is a little bit deeper, is supposed to be 14 feet. Mm -hmm. It's close to that. Uh, by and large, it's about 11 feet, uh, deep through this area. And, uh, primarily, we like to maintain that level of depth for our commercial users. Mm -hmm. So, your average, certainly the kayaks don't require right. that. <laughs> level of depth and people that uh, engage in, in human-powered vessel uh, activity on the canal, which is which is growing at an incredible rate, so we're so pleased about that. Mm -hmm. But primarily the tug and barge industry, some of the larger cruise ships to our boats. So we want to make sure we've got a safe, navigable waterway for them as well. John Canal, uh, John Callahan from the Canal Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> the two names are similar. Johnny Canal, that's my new nickname. Johnny Canal, I, I like, like it, Dave. And John, in regards of uh, to the inspections, distance-wise, mileage-wise, how far do you guys go, and then how long is the full, uh, you know? The yeah, inspections absolutely. Take well, in terms of our actual travels, we have 524 channel miles, but we won't do, for instance, the full length of Cayuga Lake, Seneca Lake. So we're, we're going to be going by water about 450 miles. Mm. And again, looking at 57 uh, locks, 16 lift bridges. Uh, and some other unique structures that are manned. So uh, we've got over 2,000 structures on the canal system. Uh, and, and in addition to this operational inspection that we do every year, obviously we we uh, take great pride in making sure those structural inspections occur regularly as well. And how often or how long does the actual inspection take from start to finish? Once you do it's it, once a year, you say, right? Once a year. Yeah. Over the course, uh, we do an informal inspection in the spring. Mm -hmm. So that establishes a baseline, and, and we're going to give some feedback to the electric 
electrical supervisors and lock and lift bridge personnel say, take care of this. We saw this. You want to address that. And th so when we come back as part of the formal inspection in the fall, uh, we've established a baseline for what we'd like to see. So that formal inspection is once a year. And we do it over the course of about 17 days. Uh, but we, we draw that out over several weeks because, again, it's a, it's a big time commitment. Uh, most people today are used to traveling along the, the throughway, finest toll road in all the land, no question. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're uh, going along at, a, at a sort of a, a slower clip, about uh, seven miles an hour. We call it life in the past lane, not life in the fast lane. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but we love it. And it's a great way to see New York State. It's a great way to uh, see the most iconic uh, waterway, really, in all the, all the nation. Sure. Now, uh, with the Erie Canal, do you have uh, information you can share with other canalways anywhere else? I we mean, do. this is such a unique system here. Uh, we do. It, it is unique, and it's the only... Uh, state-run waterway of any size mm -hmm. in America. So you right. look at the other inland waterways throughout the United States today, uh, they're all run by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. or other uh, specific groups. And really, that's because we were we were the first. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, right. again, 190 years ago this October, DeWitt Clinton hopped aboard the Seneca Chief. I don't know if he hopped. I don't know how spry <laughs> he was in Buffalo and traveled for the first time from the Great Lakes uh, to the Atlantic Ocean. And we're still doing that today, nearly two centuries later and it's really a testament to the to the incredible job that, that the men and women that work for us uh, do every day so because it's such a unique system and one of its kind one of the only of its kind how can you like look elsewhere for information on how to do this and i mean do you can or you're on your own pretty we, much because it's such a unique system to to, to some degree i mean yeah. when when you've written the book in mm -hmm. new york state the empire state you know that was bold enough to build something like this we sort of did write the book mm -hmm. but you're always learning so uh, we learn from our people that are out there doing the job every day. Mm -hmm. We do learn from, we have our counterparts in, in Canada that run a, a very nice uh, waterway system, and we do some best practices and mm -hmm. some sharing with them. And th there is a great international canal community that we correspond with. But uh, but again, you know, we, we have, uh, we're in the third generation of the canal. The canal has been, the Erie Canal has been completely rebuilt twice this uh, this generation of canal this iteration from 1905 to 1918 still going strong when we look at structures and gears and electrical components uh, over the next few weeks we are looking that, at things that were built a hundred years ago amazing. and still working yeah. every day right. so it really is amazing mm -hmm. and John with that unique system you mentioned uh, you know folks can travel the, the, the full 500 plus miles how does it impact uh, our state economically? What is the driver? For it's us? a huge economic driver for New York State. We, we look at it in two ways. We look at tourism, where, where the canal system generates about $380 million annually mm. in tourism spending in upstate New York. So upstate New York tourism, again, and this governor has been so strong on bringing tourism back to New York State, emphasizing the assets of upstate New York. So we're so thankful for that. But we also look at the non-tourism impact. So it's something that people don't think about when they flip a light switch in their house, whether that hydroelectric power came from the canal or whether they turn on their tap and their drinking water came from the canal. But we generate uh, over $6.2 billion with a B in economic impact through uses of canal water across the state, mining, uh, agricultural irrigation, hydroelectric power generation, and so much more. So it really has become sort of this inextricably linked part of New York State's energy, power, water infrastructure. A vital part. Vital part indeed, yeah. yeah. Uh, John Callahan uh, from the uh, Canal Corporation here in New York State joining us uh, on the Talk of the Town. Uh, when the inspection takes place, is it all above ground? Do you have scuba people down there? How does that look? We don't have scuba people mm -hmm. for this. We mm -hmm. do structural inspections mm -hmm. both with our own folks and and through consultants, uh, they're looking, again, we are looking at the day-to-day. -day, how are things operating? How are the electrical components? Is the wiring correct? What are the safety features? But then, of course, we do a more uh, enhanced structural inspection where we do do underwater diving. We're not doing that. I, I didn't bring my scuba gear. <laughs> and the, the idea when we're traveling across the state on a tug is very much to stay on top of the water. If that if that stops, and we've done something very wrong. Sure. And, and John, you brought a couple of the guys with you. So if you if you need a volunteer for scuba diving, I, I'm going to pick Shane so you can throw Shane out there. <laughs> we've, but we've been trying to throw him overboard for, for years now. It doesn't seem to work. He, he floats. Pops. He doesn't got, sink. He floats. He's got. He's naturally buoyant. <laughs> and you probably got. I know Bill Schweitzer is probably in the canal right now, just swimming around. He but. he is. Are you guys hiring? By the way? <laughs> you bring up Bill Schweitzer. But no, we we have great people, and it's hard not to. 
when you're entrusted with something as incredible, as iconic, as historic as the Erie Canal, it's been along for 200 years, how can you not be enthusiastic of what you do? We have great people. I just want to give a quick shout out to our leadership team here in Utica. They do a phenomenal job. Tom, Josh, Steve, Rob, Phil, Brian, they're amazing. They're people. Uh, Ann keeps the office in line, but really all their folks just do an incredible job. They're so passionate. We appreciate what they do so much. So John Canalahan joining <laughs> us from the New York State Canal. Where are you actually based? Based in Albany, New York. I live in a canal town in Waterford at the eastern end of the canal, born and raised, and uh, it's just a, a privilege. And, and you've, uh, been, you've been with the outfit, outfit for how long? 97, mm-hmm. I can have, after I got out of the Coast Guard. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it really is just, just a, a privilege to be able to work with these folks. And uh, Johnny Canal and the crew, you guys are yeah. headed to the tugboat right after this. Uh, tell us, give us a little a quick rundown of what your day is like today. We are. We'll be with uh, the incomparable Captain Jim Baker on the tug Governor Roosevelt. Uh-huh. So a fine vessel and his crew, uh, Dave and Corey. So uh, we are going to go from uh, Utica to Sylvan Beach today. We're going to be inspecting locks 20, 21, and 22, and, of course, the canal channel in between. And uh, then we will have really Oneida Lake for us is the halfway point. So uh, next week we'll continue uh, west of Oneida Lake, and we wrap up uh, on, I think, October 4th. So wow. we're looking forward to that. Uh, since we sit right on the canal here at Canal Park for Roser Communications, hopefully we can maybe uh, could catch a ride with you one day. We'd love to do that. If I- we- as long as yeah. you're not in a hurry, Dave. You know, <laughs> right. we, we, we'd love to have you board, right. and uh, we'll do it. Is right. there a horn? On the... there, there's a loud horn. Right, you good. can blow it all you want, Jay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Hey, guys, thanks for coming Thank in. You. Appreciate it.